Plaintiff Mary Favre says the defendant is her brother and she will never forgive him for having CPS take her children away 11 years ago. Mary claims the defendant's disabled son is now living with her, but the defendant is withholding his son's property, so she's suing. Defendant Michael Manry says Mary has had a vendetta against him for years, thinking he called CPS on her, but he insists he did no such thing. Michael says he has custody of his son, and Mary took him into her home without permission. So he's countersuing for emotional distress. Start with you. Hey, Your Honor, this is my brother, Michael. We, we were extremely close, and then he did the one thing that I, I can't forgive him for. He called uh, CPS, had my kids removed from my home. Now, I was on drugs. I mean, 2009, I was on drugs. I got clean and been clean ever since. Um, he, the DHS, CPS, they took my kids. When? And what year? Excuse me? What year did they? Um, 2010. You were clean, you say? I was not clean at the time. I got clean after that, after they took my kids. And so what did he do wrong? He, he called and got DHS uh, to take my kids. Wasn't it better for your kids? No, I mean, yes, I was. Rather live with you as a neglectful crackhead? Um, no, I mean, my kids still ate. I still took care of my kids. You thought you took care of them. But, um, Clearly, like Children said, and Protective Services and your relative didn't think you took care of them. And that's what a lot of drug addicts do. Right. They think that they're doing all right by their kids when they're hooked on drugs and then neglectful and not giving the children what they could rightfully deserve and what they have the potential to acquire. You say, oh, I'm doing all right. They ate peanut butter this morning. <laughs> they should be cool. Oh, I'm doing all right. I had uh, fish sticks, the same pack they ate for five days. Just took a half an inch each night of the fish stick and divided it up among all five of them. Yeah, they are doing all right. My kids eat the clothes. Yeah, they may be stained and look like they've been wearing the same clothes for five, seven days, but their clothes, no, they can't afford. They make all kind of reasons up and think that you're doing a good job. I understand. I know you do, ma'am. He doesn't in the Department of Social Service didn't think that when you were a crackhead that you were taking good care of your children. All right, and I got clean ever since then. Ooh. So I've been clean for like 13 years now. Good, well that helped you. Good man. Glad you did it. Glad you did it because she's been clean ever since. What else you want? And then now, well back in May, I, I went to a family, uh, his house and his son was there. Mm -hmm. uh, they just lost their home and his son was nasty looking, no. like he hasn't took a shower. How are your children doing now? They're doing good. Tell I, me, describe. Excuse me? Tell me, each one, what they're up to. Um, the age and what they're up to. Well, they're doing good. I see pictures of them. Uh, one's about to be 18, one's about to be 17. And then one's 15. Hold on, you haven't gotten them back since 2010? No, they uh, they have not gave me, every time I tried to get them back, I went to parenting class mm -hmm. before I lost my kids. Man, it's been 10 years, so what have they told you for these 10 years? They kept changing the case plan. For 10 years? Yes, sir, That's every time defense. I do something, they change the case plan. Do something like what? Um, like. I went to parenting class. Before I lost my kids, I was going to parenting class mm -hmm. because I had a... Uh, Tell me what they do when you change. What did you change for cause them to push things back? You said the reason you haven't oh. gotten your children back in 10 years is because they keep changing things when you do stuff. Well, so that's why I'm trying to understand what I you're gotcha. saying. Uh, in the state of Louisiana, you have like 18 months to get your children back. Right. Well... Um, I did the parenting class, like they asked, and then I went to parenting class. Then I did, um, well, they wanted me to go to rehab. I went to the rehab, but because I was already off of drugs, I went and, you know, I told them, I said, look, I quit doing drugs. I passed the drug test. But uh, they gave me a paper saying, you don't need this. If you're off of drugs, you don't need this. And I took it to the court. And my ex-husband's family has my my kids. And I think it was more to it than 
everybody's telling me. And I just never got him back. Attendant Michael Manry is being sued by his sister, who claims Michael called CPS on her 13 years ago. And as a result, she lost custody of her kids. Are you allowed to be in touch with them? I uh, talked to By the, phone? Yes, sir. I talked to the... Um, How many are there? I talked to the oldest one. How many are there? Oh, I'm sorry. Three. Uh-huh. You talked to the oldest one? Yeah. Yes, sir. How old is the Not, oldest one? I didn't hear. How old is the oldest one? Uh, he's almost 18. What is he doing? How, what is his life like? Um, He does, uh, like, they was homeschooling them, and then he just... I mean, he helps take care of his uh, foster mom because she's, like, not doing – she's on hospice. Did he get a uh, high school diploma? He's in school. They're working on it now. Right, so he'll graduate next year. What about your other children? Um, my youngest one, I don't talk to her too much. Why? Um, because she was, like, young when they went into custody that she thinks the person that – That's raising her as her mom. So I don't have contact with her too much. But um, I do write them all the time on Facebook. Um, I talk to the foster mom all the time. And, I mean, she always tells me, look, I'm proud of you for doing better. You know, she encouraged me. And then, you know, and I... Two months from now, I'm supposed to go get my CNA. I'm going to uh, try to do something with my life because I'm still young and I can, you know, do something. So I'm going to go do that and then be a travel CNA. Good. They make good money, too. So I uh, encourage you to pursue that. And good luck to you. And where are you going to try and get it? From where? And there's something by uh, where I live, they offer classes. The only thing that they offer for you to pay them back is to be uh, employed with them for six months. And I don't have to pay anything oh. for it. Excellent. All right. Well, then that's where you need to be. At least you know where to go. And, and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, good. Congratulations. I think Thank you. things will get better for you for sure and your children. Um, no, you know, I can just I, tell you that I believe it will get better. I have two older kids. They was never put in the uh, custody, the oh. state custody, and they're doing good. They got uh, seven kids between both of them, and I go see my grandkids as much as I can because it's like six-hour trip, so oh, okay. I see them as much as I can. Okay. All right. Why don't you give me some background, sir? Okay. Uh, Mary had a vendetta for 13 years against me, thinking I called CPS on her. I didn't know such thing. The kids are by the Bayou side. I mean, y'all know, I know y'all from up here, but Bayou side, when they got land, they got water right there, you know, they can drown. Traffic's coming back and forth, LA1, racing Louisiana. I'm li over there in Mississippi, how I know what goes on. I ain't called no CPS. She thinks I did. She had a vendetta against me for 13 years, ever since she lost What made her kids. think you did it? Huh? Why do you think she believed you did it? Because it, it was a male, they say a male uh, reported it. What was your understanding of the condition of the children that they were living in? I, I, I really don't know because you were I, in another state. I was in another state, so how do was I know? in another state, ma'am, yes, when sir. that happened? Yes, sir. So how, why would you think he would call if he was in another state? Because I could uh, even verify anything, and ultimately it was true because they took the children away from you. So how could it have been him being so accurate with the information, so much so that they took your children based on the call that came from him, you say, and the investigation that ensued, if he's living in another state and has zero contact with you or them? How could he because, have been? Because um, uh, my ex-husband worked on the water, and... He um, told me to write, sign a check and where I go cash the check. Well, the girl I was going to get to bring me go cash the check, she was good friends with his wife, his ex-wife at the time, uh, was his wife at the time. And, like, in Louisiana, like, down the bayou and uh, up the bayou, that's what 
they call them. Uh, a lot of people talk. Like, uh, you can be friends with this person and never talk about you, and then they go to the next person, and that's how they are. Yeah, you must so, not have left town much. Yeah, it doesn't happen in Detroit. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> that happens in every town in America, ma'am. Not just Louisiana. Not just in the Bayou. Well, That's gossip. That's called gossip. Everybody does it, including me. All right. <laughs> um, you might be the subject of my gossip tonight. Now that... <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's all, ma'am. Pendant Michael Manry is being sued by his sister, who claims Michael called CPS on her 13 years ago. And as a result, she lost custody of her kids. Uh, tell me how he owes you for the personal property. Uh, uh, back in May, uh, when I went to visit a family member, like I said, uh, his son was there. Well, um, I asked his son, to come back, if he wanted to come back home with me. He said, yeah. Well, I brought him home. Well, first of all, I asked him if he tested that, because me and him was not talking. So I asked him, did you test your dad? Let him know you're coming with me. He said, yes. So I took him, and then. How old was he? Oh, he, he? He's 19. He's got special but needs. He's, he, uh, he's easy to get persuaded to do something. He, you know, he ain't got, a, he's got a mind of a six or seven year old. Okay. He's, uh, yeah, he's got, has fetal alcohol syndrome. So, you hear he, that, ladies? And I guess I don't know how men's uh, abuse, a drug and alcohol abuse, affects the child. I just don't know. But we do know that women who use alcohol while pregnant and drugs while pregnant, it affects the child, and the child could affect them the rest of their lives. And here's an example: mm -hmm. his son has fetal alcohol syndrome, and what age at 19 has the mind of a six-year-old okay. six or seven year old yeah. like when he was born he had needles all in his head yeah. because he was uh so much addicted to like the alcohol yeah and he was pretty much bad off that's the truth you um, see why i jump past parents when they try to tell me about their drug use i jump right past you i tell you and i'm being callous and it's not always the case i said i don't care about you i want to hear about the kids and that's why that's why you're standing here all right, he's standing here all right, and everybody's thinking about what I'm going to think of them, and they want to give me their story because I'm 50, and I've been doing the same thing for 30 years, and please care about me. And by the way, though, I got a 19-year-old over here with a 6-year-old mind because of our abuse, but I don't want to talk about that. Talk about me, Judge. You feel sorry for me, Judge. Let me get a little pity out of you for me, Judge. No, I don't care about you. I care about these children. I care about, that's why I switch when you try to talk about your life. Ah, what about them children? Right. You say, when I hear that, fetal alcoholism, ah, ah, into this case, let's talk about that. So now we can get back to the case. But uh, we, when we get that opportunity, we gotta make it plain. So the property, you took his son, came to stay with you, your nephew, and what happened? Um. He refused to give his, his stuff, uh, Dakota's stuff back to him. Uh, Dakota is a wrestling fanatic. His he, son. Yes, sir. He comes over. That I got custody of. Yes. And she took him without my permission, but I got to get sued by her for my son's stuff that I already bought. Some, a, mo a lot of that stuff I bought. So I got to pay, what, twice, three times for it? Yeah, what are you saying? Maybe I'm missing something here. He, you brought clothes over with your nephew. You brought your nephew's clothes over when your nephew came to stay with you. Is that what you're saying? He didn't have no, no clothes. My uh, sister went and bought, my mom gave my sister some money. So the clothes were purchased while he was with you. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, sir. Uh, before he left, he had no clothes. They brought clothes to my family member's house. It was dirty clothes, and it was ma mainly his clothes. So, um... He is as in his, your nephew. Uh, my brother. It was mainly my brother's clothes. Then my mom gave my sister some money to, to go buy, him some, buy my nephew some clothes uh, because he had no clothes. And um, when, we came, when they came back, we left and came home. Well, my nephew, he just wants his stuff back and that's all I'm here for speaking on, on his behalf because while he was in the hospital um 
Uh, first of all, when he came to stay with me, he was his his walking, talking was off. So I took him to the doctor. The doctor uh, ordered a CAT scan. Well, when we went and done the CAT scan, he had a brain tumor. And since June, he has had four plus surgeries. And they told me if I went and took him in when I did, he could have died. I got custody of him and she never notified me at all. None. Not my mom, not me. Is that true? I called my mom. Defendant Michael Manry is being sued by his sister, who claims Michael called CPS on her 13 years ago. And as a result, she lost custody of her kids. Why didn't you notify his father? I didn't have his number. We was not talking. So she, she he stays my with my mom, or my mom stays with him. Vice versa. So I figured she would have told him. No, she, and she when... My mother. Um, what gives you the impression that you have authority over the child? Well, if I went and took him when I did, he could have died. So, I mean, I took upon myself to, you know, give him treatment. I and had, no, we was not talking. And when I let the mom know, uh, because she right, was saying... Let me just stop you. So you're suing for the personal property of his son? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, and you're suing on behalf of his son? Yana. Yes, sir. Yeah. Where do you get that authority? Um... You have legal authority to act on behalf of I have power of attorney. While he was in the hospital, I, I uh, received power of attorney. For what? Um, for his medical and all his de decisions because his mom... You have evidence of that? I, I, there's two different things. Medical, I can understand you might have that because you're the current, you were the guardian at that time. But full uh, power of attorney, show me that, please. Uh, page one. I don't one. see that being necessary just to have him treated at the hospital. Durable power of attorney. And why did you go and get this? Um, his mom went, okay, at Labana Children's Hospital. Who approved you to get this, though, to seek this? Um, well, that's, uh, I'm going to explain it. Like, when I was... Who uh, told you to seek power of attorney over his son's affairs? This is a very easy question. Well, his mom told them not to let me sign anything. Right. So, um, All right, ma'am, I'm going to dismiss your claim. Ma'am, let me say this to you. Either you've been severely affected by your previous crack addiction or you're still on drugs. Many people who were on drugs long term for decades, they have what I refer to jokingly as crackish ways. That they're not still on crack, but to be honest, what I'm really saying is that they have cognitive difficulties that they may not have had prior to their 20-year crack abuse. I know that by personal observation of dozens of people I wasn't with multi-decade addictions. What were you on? Whatever the I drug wasn't on drugs that long. I was only on That's it for enough. five years. What's your counterclaim okay, for, my sir? My counterclaim is when I... She took my son without me knowing about it. It drove me nuts. I couldn't you see eat. a miss to I, that. I, I couldn't, uh, yeah, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't. $3,500 is your judgment for her taking your child without permission, also getting a power of attorney over your child without your permission, and I can't explain why, so I'm going to dismiss your claim, ma'am, and grant his for removing his child without permission. Have a good day. Right, That's thank my you. Judgment. Thank you, honey. I want Dakota to come back home. That's my son. I've been through enough hell all these years because of my son, because of, because of other people. My kids need to quit going through all kinds of mess and live a happy life. I don't want, or I could have went and fought the legal system to get cousin. I don't want custody of him. I want, and like you, I want us close like we used to be, but. We used to be real close. We used to be closer than any brother and sister ever ever have, you know, uh, existed.